on the retro show today. I feel no shame. <laughs> you scared of this? He oh, knows what it can do. He knows. Do. I am your father. Shiver my tinkles. No. <laughs> No, he won't mow you. No. Oh, hello, Chip Dippers. Welcome to the Retro Show. And here on the channel, uh, for any of our regular viewers, you'll know we cover all things retro. We do a lot of retro computing stuff and also pop culture stuff. We'll be doing some uh, Knight Rider things, converting our Tesla into a sort of modern day kit from Knight Rider. Kit Tesla. Exactly. But I think it's fair to say that Star Wars Episode One is considered retro now. It is now, yes. We filmed it back in 1980, 1997, not that long ago. Now, when I say we filmed it, more on that in a second. Some of, some of you will understand what I mean by that. But regardless of what you think of the prequels, I think everybody agrees that Darth Maul is an awesome character and that lightsaber duel, the trio, uh, <laughs> is one of the best, if not the best, in the whole franchise. <laughs> How do you say a three-way duel? A duel of the fates. Love it. And that song, of course, uh, iconic. I think George Lucas said to John Williams, oh, we, you know, we just need something Star Wars-y. You know, don't worry, it's just a prequel. And he came out with the best song of any Star Wars movie. All of that means that we are super excited about what's in particularly this box, but also part of it's in this box because they forgot to send it all at once. <laughs> they told me they were sending another package. And would you like to tell people if they didn't know from the video title yeah. and thumbnail, <laughs> the video title yeah. and thumbnail, what is in, what's in the box? What's in the box? The hero lightsaber belonging to Darth Maul himself. I still can't believe it. I think we're gonna unbox him, it'll be like a, Rolling pin or something. <laughs> but yeah, the screen used actual prop from that actual moment just before this, where he turns on the lightsaber and both blades come out. But yes, very recently, a prop store held an online auction for hundreds of props from famous movies. And we decided we had to have this for reasons that we'll explain in a second to give you all important context. So we placed our highest bid we watched the webcast uh, as the judge, what do you call the guy and girl with the gavel? Auctioneer? Watch the auctioneer yeah. take the bids and we won. Oh, won. We won Darth Maul's lightsaber. The drama is real. It still sounds surreal. It does. It? Okay, <laughs> so it wasn't very cheap, but I think yes. it, if anything, it's gonna be a good investment for the future and give us some, some happiness in the meantime. But, well, why did we want this so much? Well, ladies first. Why don't you tell people at home why you had to have it? I was 12 and a new Star Wars film was debuting for the first time in a very long time. In a galaxy far, far away. In a galaxy, from a galaxy far, far away. And it was the first movie that I had ever camped out for. And I remember sitting on lawn chairs playing with lightsaber shaped pens and chopsticks and dueling my friend in line while we waited hours for the movie to start. And I remember sitting in the theater and I was so excited. And just absorbing everything, you know, everything that's being told to me is canon, okay. This is new, this is new. Anakin, all these things, Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan Kenobi, young Obi, hello. You know, all new information. Hello there. Hello there. And then this man came out and I said, okay, new villain, very scary. And he ignites his lightsaber, nothing new. And the moment that he rotates it and ignites the other side, my brain exploded <laughs> and that is my first core memory of being mind blown from a movie, from a twist, from anything. And it's, you know, he asked me what the most memorable moment in film history, my first memorable moment, and genuinely the only thing that I could think of was watching the other side of that lightsaber at night. It's wonderful, isn't it, to see 
how people reacted to the prequels when that was kind of their first big Star Wars film, mm -hmm. which explains why so many people have genuine love for the prequels. Whereas my generation, there's a bit of an age difference here, as you may have been able to calculate. Uh, I worked on episode one when I was very young, in my early 20s. She's 14 years younger than me. Back of the net. <laughs> Thank you, Alan Partridge there. When I was much younger, my first movie role was a little film called Star Wars Episode One: The Beginning. That's what it said on the contract. And I played Starfighter Pilot, who became known as Gavin Sykes. They chose my character to be the protagonist of Star Wars Episode One: Battle for Naboo, which I've got here somewhere. Uh, you may have played this on the N64 or the PC or um, any of those. I think I've got the cartridge in here still. A relic. A relic, really. I mean, it's, that's the weird thing with, with life. This still feels like yesterday to me, but what I did was now embodied in a game that's on a retro console cartridge. Still fantastic. Uh, and that character then went on to be in Star Wars Galaxies, the massive multiplayer online game where you could, he would go and give you missions and stuff. And little did I know that all that work in 1997, which when we filmed it, would lead to me going on to work on another six Star Wars movies and games, which is still mind-blowing, but that's not what this video is about. I will put some links in the description if you want to read some of my uh, on-the-set diaries and tales from that. But we did do a video recently where I went back and tried to find my character in Star Wars Galaxies, and there I explained what you'll come to understand is why this prop is so important to me. Here's what I said. In order to travel to Thede and meet Gavin Sykes himself, we have to go inside that hangar, which brings back a few more memories. Ah, oh, good times, apart from all the killing. All right, well, with that said, let's get a ticket out of here. Oops, it looks like we missed the transport. Well, I guess while we wait, I'll show you the place that I sat down and ate a jam donut one time. Yeah, there's a lot of waiting around on film sets. But luckily, I had something entertaining to watch. I really watched them film the whole thing while sitting under my Naboo Starfighter right there. And from one ship to another, let's follow protocol and give our ticket to the protocol droid. And you know, those tickets really remind me of PCBs. And if you want a PCB, I recommend PCB Way! They make great quality PCBs from just five bucks, because as we all know, PCB stands for playing captain brilliantly, doesn't it? And we are now at the Karen Starport. So let's go and find the good captain himself, myself. Honestly, I'm beside myself. Now you might be thinking it doesn't look hugely like me. Now in this magazine, they explained that they did use my character's likeness for creating the game. Presumably they must have looked at the surviving pilots, knowing that Gavin Sykes saves the day in the game. And maybe they used this image to draw him from. Who knows? But what we do know is that he's going to set us a mission. Here it is. So yeah, those ships on this side there, I was literally sitting underneath one of those. I actually got up at one point to go and stretch my legs and forgot that the uh, engine was above me and hit my head rather loudly. And when you do some something like that on a quiet set and see... <laughs> I gone Obi-Wan, Darth Maul and George Lucas turn around and look at you suddenly. Slightly embarrassing. He's but... embarrassed for you. <laughs> Thank you. But they brought me back anyway. But it was wonderful. Um, just The weird thing is I didn't know what that was going to become, right? This is just three actors dancing around, cutting every few seconds to change lighting or camera. It's, it's a very different thing to what we ultimately saw. But Enough about us and our backstories. Now you've got the context. We're excited to just unbox. So shall we? Yes, please. This is gonna be a very fun boxing. I can't stand this anymore because this is the stand, apparently. So let's unbox this first mm -hmm. and then we'll have something to put the lightsaber on. 
outstanding. I don't understand. Now you understand. <laughs> and there it is. Well, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back soon. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's do it. Ready? Yes. I was born ready. This is unreal. Okay. There's a tube. It's on YouTube. <laughs> Next face. Wow. That, that's not it. Oh. So excited. Okay. More packaging. Don't break it. Well, I might pass the stone first. Okay. Look, I am your father. That's surprisingly good. Yeah, you might have to keep that. You had better understand that I am in power here. Sorry about that. Oh, that's heavy. <laughs> really heavy. Why is that so heavy? When they say hero prop, they're oh not Oh my god, getting... it's really heavy. Body tingles and shivers. Shiver my tingles. There it is. He's back. He's a, he survived. <laughs> Let's just feel it together. Gonna look down the barrel? <laughs> no. Never do that. Does it smell like Ray Park? Does it smell like Leaveston Studios in Watford? Wow. Oh, he says yuck. You scared of this? He oh, knows what it can do. He knows. Do. He's seen the movie. <laughs> do you see the? Oh yeah. Tells it a little towards me. Four five two one Y three zero V three one one six S dash three. I don't know if that's a must be a prop maker's serial number, but that looks handwritten in, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And obviously we wanted to do our due diligence and make sure this prop was the real thing. Now this is actually a photo from the official Star Wars website and books. So we compared this to a photo of our saber, albeit taken with a different camera lens. And it's immediately possible to see similarities, like these three dots here. Another match here. These parts swivel against each other, by the way. There's this sloped ding on this detail piece here. Even a dot in the bottom of this control and so on. And with all that, plus its certificate of authenticity, there's no doubt this is the hero prop. And you can see there's a little bit of wear. Mm -hmm. Just there. You have to be very careful with this. Very careful. So you can tell it's the hero oh, yeah. one. I'd like to see his move and see if we can just mimic it. <laughs> I can't do that spin. to put my tattoos on. Yeah. So how bizarre that I was watching him hold this out and by weird twists and turns of fate, I now own it somehow. Somehow. <laughs> somehow Palpatine has returned as well. I don't know if you heard. And how weird for you. Just getting to see this, the first thing that ever blew my mind as a child and even just to get to see it, let alone, you know, is amazing. And honestly, I, I feel like we are just... Custodians. Cause exactly. We are just one of many people that this will eventually pass down through. Not too many. We should give Sam Weaver a call. Yeah. So uh, our buddy, and he's worked on one of the uh, Amiga episodes that we did. Um, beautiful. He, of course, voices Darth Maul in Clone Wars and in Solo mm -hmm. movie. Uh, I didn't tell him that we won this... But I um, hope he's not angry. 
I hope, he, I hope we didn't outbid him. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And it moves on its own. That's kind of interesting. You, you made it go faster. That's crazy. It's almost like video editing is a thing. Or the force. Well, what, what to do with it? I'm going to run around the house playing Duel of the Fates and pretending to be Darth Maul for about 10, 15 minutes <laughs> or until my arms get tired. Like she did when actually this box got delivered. You don't know that I did this. Um, but when we got this box, here is what Lady Fractic did. And I made sure to save the clip from the home security cameras. <laughs> I listen to it a lot. Just like that. I feel no shame. <laughs> you would have done it too. And one other thing you might do too is give it a suitably evil yet cool display stand. <laughs> And what the heck, let's switch up the light switches so they don't feel left out as well. Luckily the switches are quite loose, so we won't need to use force. <clears throat> oh, there he goes again. Bye. <laughs> Donk. I hope Darth Maul's not watching this because that's a bad memory for him. If Ray Park would like to sign this, uh, let me know. <laughs> Where would you sign it though? Right here on the tip. Just the tip. Just the... You shouldn't look into the thing, really, should you? No. Ah, ah, turn it off, turn it off. Oh, oh. oh, that's okay. I'm okay. I'm okay, baby. No problem. What were we saying? Um, babe, that's really bad. No, it's just, just a scratch. No, it's it's really bad. It's Tis, tis but a flesh wound. No, I, th I think we need to go. Well, well we've we probably run out of things to talk about anyway, haven't we? Yeah. So, um, it's getting cloudy in here, so I can't really see very well. Um, do you turn the smoke machine on? Yes. You did? Uh-huh. Oh, that's all right then. Well, we'll be doing lots more fun stuff with this in a future episode. Until then, we'll leave you with some glamour shots. And yeah, it just remains to say... Thanks for watching. Subscribe and support below and cheerio. Cheerio. Ma, got like tearing up or something. Yeah, yeah. We, we should go to the hospital. Why? Is it, are you okay? Um, I'm not feeling well. Oh, okay. Well, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Cheerio. Going to uh, the hospital. Yeah. yeah. Turn it off, turn it off.